And here's the final segment of We Haya. <clears throat> we left off with Chusok, 2008. We'll read that, and I hope you enjoyed this book. There'll be many more to come. Chusok, 2008. High heels, shorts, and parasols stroll from shop to shop, perusing protest pamphlets before they let them drop. Students lounge in luxury, forget the bloody past. Still, barbed fences guard the tower, freedom forced to last. Cosmos under sycamore feels the silver shine. Girls in pairs and triplets relax with cold rice wine. Here they call it Chusuk, Thanksgiving at the graves. Reverent parents, another chance to teach children to behave. A loudspeaker reminds the guests to pay for this year's mow. One asks if grandparents' graves are along U.S. Drive. I say we don't even visit parents when they are alive. Tradition hangs on mandatory days of industry closure. All time off is gobbled up by familiar exposure. This may be better than the adulterer sneaks back home, but leaves no time for adventuring minds to roam. She comes dressed in black with wings and bangs for hair offering no snack, which stops your questionnaire. The U.S. occupies Korea for only four more years. When we leave, will it bring happiness or tears? Of course, the U.S. never did leave. Chilly day. Here you are, and here they are, in camouflage on a weekend furlough, scoping out the wide variety of female talent. From rank amateur to well-played skeptic, the ladies walk by until the rest of the local unit falls into form, a posse of seven. Is it a typical Chenet day? No. The coffee pastry shop, usually packed on Saturday, is down to two of us. No one, I mean none of the shop walkers, buys anything. Today's parade is bagless, an early sign, like snow-poking crocus, of a springtime of heartbreak. Human desire keeps us on the same course, even if stripped of buying. We want to mingle, so here comes the expats. Some lonely, others paired up. Another sleepless year is a sure bet. Productivity only matters if you're producing food. Bund hair atop mega hottie stands, pink rose in hand, waiting a while, then moving west, searching for the idiot who caused her boredom. The brown dog held by the crazy man gets away. Peace on the AstroTurf carpet er, enrages the shop manager, is swept up and flees with its homeless master. Twitching, greasy-haired, dark-skinned landmark is on the run again. Maybe he finds a warm place to sleep. Someone did up his hair in cornrows so it doesn't get scraggly. Walkers veer away. He's seen it for years. They could learn survival from him, but don't. The man who solved all problems. He didn't have a driver's license. He rode his bike each day. Someone ran him down last week, and M is here to say, I lost a friend just last week, Tuesday, Baek Jong Song by name. He was a genius, visited by men from Seoul who came to learn. Baek knew that Earth was running out of its ability to nourish, so he caused no carbon exhaust. An example but who followed. They knew his math, they knew his face, his children can only remember. His wife waits with tea and drinks, but fresh flowers do not prevail. This man was quite unknown to me, as you can tell by now. The drivers in this me-first town did not slow for him. One ran him down in what is described as a type of trance. Imagine how the children felt when they heard the thud. What will their emotions feel when all grown up and some yellow bus goes by? When they are parents, they will not tell this awful story. Still, their hearts will have a special place reserved for that day in March. Professor M somehow sits at a resort to brighten up MT. Surely his friend would wish it so. He hides anger, sadness, grief, stays strong and full of fun. Maybe now he will take the time to write a line or two or sit and stare because he cares, which is what he's meant to do. 
the spirit within. Even when your life grinds down to bus stops, floating from one job to the next, so full of required tasks that you become constipated, that you relieve yourself right in the middle of a class being taught at the house of a nice doctor, that you barely have the strength to play Legos for 20 minutes before falling asleep right there on the floor, that your dead love life isn't even mourned anymore, comes this magic moment of goodness, the smile from the three-year-old, the woman who nods as she takes your offered seat on the 54, heading from northwest to southeast, the shaking branch of the familiar sycamore, the thousands of women who walk by, the noise of bouncing balls dribbled home at 1.30 in the morning, waking you up, but part of the same natural feeling that makes you aware again of the force that glues us together. Even when your money dries up, and your house, and your dreams, and your spouse, and the bus driver yanks around a corner, slams to his stops, sending all but the strongest flying around, and your father got old, and your family is dying, and the jobs aren't enough, and your child is hungry, and the gig is up, and there is no time left for pizza or beer, and the cute roller skaters all disappear, the magic comes in the shape of a squirrel, or six walnuts handed to you by some new Buddhist, or a piece of cake made of coffee and almonds gets handed across the old kitchen table with love. Hikaru which is a Japanese for cherry or cherry blossom. Hikaru. One cherry blossom detaches, falls, a single unit allowing fruit its space, starting its new journey, island to reflecting pond, orchard to cottage yard, daughter to lover, enhanced by the wind, if even for only six seconds, transformed to long-boned genius, long-yearning adult, Considerate friend, purple-green plaid from soft pink, tan suede boots from four-petaled bloom. Hikaru, as they say in Japan, hits the town running, arms crossed, cradling herself like the war-torn victims of Vietnam, but not worn or torn. She flings enthusiastic youth toward outstretched limbs. She captures her beginning and future simultaneously, shedding one form, embracing another, sweating humid spring, still awkward in this skin. Descending unannounced, she moves among mere mortals, spreading joy, quietly demanding obedience, offering all in exchange for all. Most cannot accept, choose an easier, less complicated path, but those brave, strong souls born from deep roots, blessed metamorphosed beings who join Miss Cherry soon realize if for one day, week, or lifetime, their lives will never be the same. This was uh, quite an endeavor. It was a greatest hits book, and it was uh, transformed and made better and translated uh, by Park Yong Sung, who was the master translator and also worked on uh, some of the other translations by the other younger uh, translators. Also, Go Miran, Jung Kang Hee, and Kim Soon. Um, especially the case of Joan Kanghi, um, she disappeared before I was able to fully thank her the way I should have. Uh, I hope she's doing great up in Seoul. Go Miran's doing great things uh, with the traditional uh, theater up in Seoul. Uh, Kim Soon is uh, still taking tests, seeking uh, different types of employment. And Park Young Sung is completing uh, paper after paper after paper. Uh, hoping to retire as a research, uh, full-blown research professor. Uh, she's really uh, the most amazing person I've met here in Guangzhou. Um, and I really can't thank her enough for putting this into Korean, as well as uh, the English version, with her other three helpers. Uh, it made my day, as they say. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this book. And I hope you stick around for readings of the upcoming books. I don't know if I'll go back and read the previous books. The greatest hits from those books are here in Wehaya.